Coyotes Icebreakers is presented by our friends at AutoNation Honda Chandler, located in the Chandler 202 Auto Mall. We're featuring the all-new 2019 Honda Passport. Experience the rugged midsize SUV that is equipped to turn any outing into an adventure. Its 280 horsepower V6 engine helps you power through even in adverse road conditions. Now let's meet our guest. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Score! It's the captain. He gets his first hat trick at the buzzer. So without further ado, let's bring out the, the man of the hour, the man of the weekend, the man of the last two decades here in the Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, Shane Doan. Hi, Captain. Hey. hey. Uh, so I'm going to bring out some of your closest friends in a little bit. All right. But do you mind if we uh, chat for a little while? I, I would love to. Okay. As um, long as it's not emotional, we'll see. Me? <laughs> How's that going to happen? Yeah, exactly. Um, first of all, I, I, I feel like that this is a, a royal wedding. How are you doing? It, it's either a wedding or a eulogy. I'm trying to figure out which one it is, but it's, it's somewhere in between, I think. Um, it, it's, it's been amazing. It's been a lot of fun. Is it sort of surreal, though? Are you, are you pinching yourself in any way, shape, or form, realizing just how big of an event this is becoming? Yeah, no, there's no question about it. I, I obviously, it's overwhelming in, at times because it seems like it's, yeah, it's, it's been bigger than I ever would have anticipated, and, uh, and I'm so appreciative of it. I mean, everything. The Coyotes have done. Ice Den's been amazing. I, they've been over the top to me. The Coyotes have been over the top. Everyone seems to be doing uh, so much more than I ever would have expected. How many members of your family and extended family are in town? Yeah, we got a lot of them. A lot <laughs> yes, of them. You do. How many? I had a bunch show up that I didn't even know were here. Uh, uh, like okay. They, All right. We we went to Top Golf and I had some relatives just happen to be in town, so they they stopped by too. It's it's great. I absolutely. It's the best part of this whole thing is the experience of seeing everyone be able to come and be able to enjoy it with them. And uh, from here, like I am bolting as I didn't realize this, but I'm going as fast as I can to go meet all of them because this is going to be the last night that I really get to see them because it's going to be pretty hectic next two days and they all came all the way down here and I feel bad that I'm not going to get to see them as much as I wanted to. Well, I think it's great that you've invited all of us to come with you to yeah. hang out. Yeah, do you guys come on over? <laughs> okay, sure. uh, okay. um, I wanted to. Share I didn't invite them, so you guys, at least I'm inviting <laughs> okay, you. All right, so. good. I'm glad we got that out of the way. I wanted to share a little bit of uh, insight into the ceremony itself and how many of you guys are going to make it out there Sunday? Your season ticket holders are going. That's what I thought. Okay. Okay, a couple of things before we bring the guys out. I, I want to play This Is Your Life, Shane Doan. We have some pictures. You'll see them, Shane, on the monitors here of the young Shane Doan. And I, I do have to ask you this. First of all, can you tell us where some of these pictures are as they move by quickly? Yeah, those, that's all at the ranch. That's okay. all at home. I grew up. Right. That's on a trampoline. I'm jumping on a trampoline there. Wow, look at you. That's your yeah. son. Yeah. It's not. I had a straight nose then. <laughs> okay. Little, so we're, little we're, hockey mullet? Yeah. So... Did that kid ever dream of a moment like you're about to experience? There's no way, right? Not a chance. I, not even in the slightest way would it ever cross my mind. I thought I was going to work on, with the ranch and on the farm for my whole life and was mm -hmm. ecstatic about that. So not a chance that ever crossed that guy's mind. All right, let's roll this video here. We've seen this a thousand times on Fox Sports Arizona, but the day the, uh, <laughs> the earth stood still in the draft and the Edmonton Oilers have been, well, pretty lousy ever since. <laughs> <laughs> what what that young man didn't dream of this day either, did he? No, not a chance. Billy Lazook and John Paddock are up there with me. That's that was pretty cool. Those guys and Mr. Bettman. That's it's pretty special. Um, I, I think John might actually be in the in the tomorrow or on Sunday. That's unbelievable. I can't believe how young my mom and dad were. <laughs> <laughs> you did just say that, didn't you? I know they're wow. the same age as me now. <laughs> But that kid wasn't dreaming of that. That kid, young man, was dreaming of staying in the league, right? Yeah. Well, if you saw my stats for the first four years, you'd have been. I had a little bit of hope. Actually, Taylor Burke's here, and he was the one that he's. He he's had right me in there. the minors because my stats were so bad. So it was pretty close for a little bit. Yeah. Which was unbelievable. Taylor and I have become such good friends, and he stood in with me when when it wasn't very easy, and I sure appreciate that. Yeah, those Springfield Falcon pictures are really cool. 
They are. How many they days are. were you down? You were down there a while, weren't you? 39, 39 games. 39, not that you were counting. I think. Okay. Uh, one more before we bring out uh, your buddies here. And this is, uh, I mean this question. We're going to see your family here. We, we've gotten to know them so well over the years. But how, how do you tell your kids how to handle what's happening to you right now? How do you keep their feet on the ground, Shane? Oh. Well, my wife has done an unbelievable job of, I got, I got the most amazing kids. They're unbelievable. And uh, I'm so blessed and thankful to have, um, my wife did just an amazing job with them. And they, they love and celebrate everything that, uh, that I've got to do in my career, but at the same time, it really doesn't mean that much to them. <laughs> as long as I come home and get to spend time with them, that's all they care about, and um, they're amazing. My daughter, my oldest daughter, it's kind of like the ultimate cats in a cradle. I've missed quite a bit of her significant things, and uh, she's not gonna be able to be here tonight uh, on, on Sunday because she has something now, which is the coolest thing in the whole world, that my daughter's, she's 20 and she's, away in college and she's in a play and she's got the lead and she doesn't want us there for her opening. She actually opened last night. My daughter's there tonight. She doesn't want anyone else there because she wants to do it. And then I get to go next week. You actually said to me a couple of years ago when it was near the end that those were the things that you were never going to miss again. And here you are missing something on the last vestige, <laughs> right? No, 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 no. I get, to be, I get to go. She did not want us there for this weekend. Because okay, if okay, she said right, I okay. had to be there... I would have had to been there tonight or last night, but okay. she was adamant that no right. one was allowed to be there. Okay. And she said, can you come the following weekend? But she can't be there this, and which is, again, the old cats in the cradle, silver spoon. Wow. God bless Harry Chapin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know that his wife wrote most of that song and gave it to him and said, this is happening, and he wrote the end of it, and he realized he had to change he couldn't be on the road and touring all the time. See, no one loves useless information more than me, and that is something I'm going to use again. Good night, everyone. I'm, yeah, I'm going to use again. <laughs> all right, so with that, uh, we want to bring out our very special guest here for this uh, special edition of our Icebreakers here in Fox Sports, Arizona. Let's start with a Stanley Cup winner in Carolina, your teammate here for a few years, the one and only. He is also your neighbor. You guys both work for the National Hockey League. I don't know who is higher on the totem pole, but ladies and gentlemen, Ray Whitney, <laughs> the wizard. Here. Can we get him a stool? Can we get him a stool so he can get up on there? Okay. He's going to have to jump. Uh, another Stanley Cup winner with the Chicago Blackhawks. Your teammate here in parts of four-plus years, recently retired. Ah, one of the great people, Antoine Vermet. Champ. His nickname is Killer. <laughs> okay. Killer. All right. The uh, captain of the Coyotes before your reign, Shane, one of the most yeah. consistent defensemen of his era. Also one of the most sarcastic Finns I've ever met in my life. Dry as toast, one of the best people on the planet, Teppo Newmanin. Yes. He's being sarcastic with every single thing he says for the rest of the night. I Everything. guarantee it. I guarantee yeah, yeah. it. Okay. And uh, I think maybe one of your oldest friends in your hockey circle is a teammate in Kamloops and Arizona. We've separated you for two reasons. I don't want a war to break out, and he's got the flu, and I don't think you should be sick, okay? <laughs> Teppo's okay. He's immune. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Tyson Nash. I thought he might wear his jean jacket tonight, but he didn't wear it. <laughs> of all the people, eh? It has started. <laughs> you dusted yours off. <laughs> okay. Hey, Andre, how's this look on me? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, the, rules, the rules are, gentlemen, there are no rules. Um, but I will call a third man in if Teppo says something that goes over my head and Ray piles on, all right? <laughs> fair uh, enough, fair and, enough. And Tyson, you can be the instigator. So water always finds its place, okay? And, and Anton, whenever I need to bring it back, I'm going to go right to you. In French? Sure. Okay, yeah. good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> Donor we, can't understand English, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. All right, I, wanna, I, wanna I just want to go quickly around the horn up to you, but this is the same question that I've been asking of literally everybody under the sun in the last 90 days while traveling around the National Hockey League and tracking down every single connection to Shane Doan that we possibly could. My first question to everyone was, What's the first thing you think of when I say the name Shane Doan, Tyson Nash? I'll start with you. Shane Doan. Horse. <laughs> okay. Just one word. Okay. Tempo, how do you top uh, that? Oh, uh, yeah. Strong. Strong. <laughs> Antoine? Well, I was going to say something nice because he paid me to do that, but <laughs> I was going to say respect, but... It's too nice, so I'll pass it on. I thought we, I was, we were here for wits. <laughs> <laughs> wits. 
No, they didn't like me enough here. Ray? Late. Oh, very good. Oh, every... The fact he's here right now, I'm surprised. I thought we'd all be standing here waiting oh. for him to finally make his entrance. There you must know. be ice cream here somewhere. There's got to be. You know why the game's at 7 and the ceremony's at 5, right? He might so be there time? by 5. I, exactly. He might be on Thanks, time. Guys. I doubt it. No, you know I what? Get... His mom and dad are here, so he's he'll sh- be on time. Yeah. Do you want to respond to those guys? Any one of those things that was thrown at you just no, there? Th- well, I'm not sure about Tyson's, but uh, um, that's... Uh, that, that's that's pretty accurate. I think all of that. I don't think Vermi knew that it was for me because I had to convince him to come. Wits has been running a total since I uh, started playing with him, and I owe me well, how many hours? You're up to three and a half hours that you owe me. Yeah, I owe him three and a half hours of waiting, and then uh, <laughs> I'm at five years. And but if I you, had to do and, it for a living. I can't believe what you would have right now. And if Ridiculous. anyone's seen Repo's arms, then everyone's strong for Repo. So <laughs> <laughs> just like that, yeah. you've put him down. Tell us about Maybe that horse blanket why. you're wearing, Shane. <laughs> I stole it. I stole it up with the, with, the, with the saddle that you guys gave me. I just want you to remember that, what you just said. I stole it, and we'll revisit that tomorrow. Okay, well, I, I want to roll a little bit of video here for you because while we were talking to so many of these people around the National Hockey League, not everybody took the high road. I have a very short clip of the likes of, I believe it's, yes, it is. It's uh, Joe Thornton of the San Jose Sharks, Vern Fiddler, and Brad May, when I said, hey, uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind when I say Shane Doan? Roll it, please. Competitive. Um, <clears throat> hard to play against. Um, dirty. You know, believe it or not, dirty. He, <laughs> yeah, he got me good a couple times. Then <clears throat> I remember him saying, oh, sorry, Joe. Yeah, sure, donor. Um, but yeah, very, very competitive guy on the ice. One of the dirtiest guys on face-offs, and we always used to get into this, uh, you know, playing against each other, and, and then when I got uh, signed there in Phoenix, and, you know, I'd, I'd always bug him. We'd be working on face-offs or whatnot after practice, and he'd still be, you know, digging in, and he's so, such a competitive guy that um, I always used to tease him that, uh, you know, you're just as cheap in practice as you are in the game. Playing with Shane, um, number one, he's a family guy. Um, He'd go to bat for any one of his teammates. Um, this guy had impeccable character, um, just, a, just a terrific human being. And yes, my son, if I had more sons, I'd love them to grow up and be like Shane Doan, um, just a quality person. And to see how he developed as a, as a teammate and, of course, throughout his career, um, he was probably the fattest, skinny guy in the NHL. Can someone get Brad May some head and shoulders, though? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just start with the dirty part, Tyson. Was he dirty out there? He was dirty. Okay. <laughs> really dirty. Tapo? Yeah, he was, but he always apologized. It was, <laughs> it was like even we played against a couple of times, and, you know, he comes and hits me or something. The next face-off, he's there. Sorry about that. Sorry, Repo. <laughs> sorry. I had to hit you. So, it, you know, it was fun. Antoine, how about in the face-off circle? You made a career out of that. Was he, was he cheating even in practice? Yes, yes, of yeah. course. Okay. But <laughs> okay. One face-off, I remember in the playoff, we were, you remember against, where, you know where I'm going with that? Huh? Yeah. So we're playing against L.A. and uh, Shane Love, uh, the Kings, as you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> and and then there's one face-off, usually Shane doesn't take draws, but like for some reason, sometimes, really nice guy and obviously... Sometimes very competitive, and he gets on the edge when you know the it gets in there. And uh, out of the blue, I get the tap on the shoulders, Burmy. I want this face off, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, I'm looking across. This is a. Uh, it was Mike Richards, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm like, oh boy, poor guy, it's coming. <laughs> and I know he doesn't go for the puck, and sure enough, somehow like <laughs> Richie went up in the air, and Donor <laughs> fell on him. I don't know. It's just like pure luck. It was slipped. dirty. I slipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, unfortunate. No, sorry about that, Richie. <laughs> Ray, you uh, defended Ravi Torres for about five hours to the national media in Chicago, which I still have on my laptop, and I listen to it sometimes when I try to figure out a way to get out of a torrid situation in my life because he handled it so well. So what would you say about this guy, if you could put that face on, the, the dirty player, the guy that cheats in the face-off circles in practice? He's like that... Uh... The silent assassin, I guess. Oh, Remember okay. the yeah. 
the Viet Congs used to hide underneath the, and they come up out of a foxhole and yeah. just cut you and then down. You would never know yeah. what happens, right? At a face-off, Donar, like you said earlier, he's strong. So as a winger, you're standing beside him and he's just sitting there. And the puck drops and he's so strong, he hits you, he puts his stick over both of your feet, pushes both your legs though, and you'll face down every time. <laughs> and he stands above, he goes, oh, so like you said, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry, little guy. Sorry, sorry hey. little guy. Hey. Yeah. I learned yeah. that I learned that the hard way from Wits though, because Wits is the one that taught me how to do it off face-offs. Because he'd come in and he'd be like, "Hey, donor, how's everything going? Everything's good. Hey, how's the family? How's everybody doing?" And you'd be like, "Oh, okay, yeah, everything's good, right? Thank. Oh, hey." And he'd be out and he'd score on you and you'd be minus one and you'd get in trouble from coming back to the draw. And he'd be and he'd be looking at you like I did I wasn't planning that, it just happened that way. Puck fell on my stick. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and so you'd be minus one and you'd get in trouble because Ray was talking to you right before he scored. Everyone's good? How's Andrea? How's the kids? Everyone's yeah. good? Yeah. And then he'd go and score. <laughs> so he, I took it a little bit different because I'm not quite as skilled as him. <laughs> so I had to do something else. <laughs> you guys all played against him, right? So what was that like? I mean, in the Heat of the battle, Tyson. It was good. It was fun. It was it was bragging rights. I, to this day, I still took him down one time in no, a wrestling match. He never match. ever did. It's <laughs> not true. This this guy would show up at your hotel room. The the door there'd be a knock at the door, and you the pee po- the peephole would be covered with his big sausage finger, and you'd open it just enough, and all of a sudden he just bulldoze you, grab you. Bounce you off the bed, and I'll never forget we were in a hotel room in Kamloops, oh. and he, the whole table shattered. <laughs> and then he was calling Uncle Tyson. No, oh, my goodness. That never, ever happened. Never once has that ever happened. But we had an, uh, we had an unbelievable wrestling. He thinks for, like, half of a second he might have had an advantage, and oh, that's I a claim ha- to a win. I had him in the reverse chicken wing. <laughs> Our knees were all rug burned. Uh, you, you try go go home with uh, <laughs> and explain that story to your wife. <laughs> we were wrestling, honestly. You know what? I Shane and I were wrestling. Oh, yeah, Shane and no, I were wrestling. No. I gotta go. Thank you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Jerome was in there with us, so it was yeah, the three Jerome, of us. Darcy oh, Tucker. Yeah. Well, I want to call an audible, Brock. Can we roll the Kamloops video here? That just, can you please, I'm going to give you a chance to get him back. The, the images you're going to see here of you guys in the Kamloops days will oh. curl your toes. Oh, wait, wait. You've got to yeah. have a picture of Tyson walking in his uh, Big Star jeans don't, and had my Jordash on. Don't have that. Here we come. I think you're going to love that us. that tongue. <laughs> here it comes. And then uh, there's Oh, that. look at the flow. Smasher. Smasher. It's the reason we call them skinny. Look at them. Uh, I think that's a win. <laughs> that's a win the Memorial Cup, wasn't it, Tice? I get an assist on that, by the way. Tempo, you saw him in the earliest incarnation of him in the National Hockey League. Did you have any idea that this was going to happen? Uh, no. <laughs> to be honest, no. When uh, Shane started in Winnipeg, there he was. Uh, same way, great person, happy, happy fellow. And, uh, but the big difference was when he was on the ice, he, he kept smiling. Like even people talked to him and, you know, stories, he just kept smiling. So it wasn't really going well for him. Because everybody was wondering, is this guy serious? Like he's <laughs> just a young, young kid here and he's all smiling and he's just happy to be in the league. But it took a couple of years to uh, adjust and he stopped smiling and... Started act act like a professional, and uh, <laughs> and uh, even if he, his fourth year, he had six goals in 80 games. I think I didn't have a goal for or the first five. 37. I'd, I'd six. I'd six goals. So it tells what kind of person he was. <laughs> <laughs> smiling, just to keep smiling. Happiest two goal scorer in the league, eh? Reaper, the, Reaper liked to point that one out to me every now and again. You're the happiest two goal scorer in this whole league. <laughs> Do you think the referees are glad that he's gone? <laughs> You know yeah, what I mean? Honestly, yes, like, honestly, he is the he's a pretty big whiner. <laughs> <laughs> like every call, every offside, just if they were wrong, just only if they were wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, no, I don't think they miss him at all. Okay, Tepo, what do you think? No, that's a good point. Never thought about that way, but <laughs> now that's why I'm looking here. back, yeah, it makes sense. Thanks. He, yeah, good point. <laughs> you, you guys were with the the later version. What do you think? Not a chance. <laughs> with Shane in the lineup. 
they were a game within the game, and that was yes. him against the referees all the time. And Shane's so competitive. He likes to argue. He likes to show his side. And obviously, uh, ref were not on the right side a lot of time with Shane, and he uh, wasn't shy away to show it, express Ray, it. Ray, it felt like a, a debate. If you watch just that, it was like a debate was literally happening. In, in well, front. most refs here are a bunch of F-bombs and stuff like that. They've never been yelled at before like Shane. <laughs> God, goodness, fudge. What are you doing? It's never, you know, if I'm yelling, it's F bomb after F bomb coming at you. And I'm get, so he doesn't get penalties because how do you give a guy an unsportsman like for saying fudge at you? Right? So, so he was diplomatic in the way he did it. But now working for the league, I can tell you this the referees do not miss Shane Doan. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to get that out there. Just wanted to get that out there. I, I got along great with all of them. I knew all their names. We were friends. We just had a lot of debates. Every I'm sure a lot of Christmas cards were spent your yeah. way, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot of debates on whether or not that was the right call or not. <laughs> All right, I want to I flash back to uh, the leadership of the Coyotes before you took over. I think we're going to Ebrock, if that's okay with you. Teppo, I have to go right to you. You were there then. You became a captain, obviously. How in the world did this guy survive with the swashbuckling Keith Kachuk, Jeremy Roenick, Rick Tockett, Dallas Drake? I could go on and on. How do you think yeah. he endured that? Well, I think it helped him. You know, we, we were a colorful team. We have, you know, so many different characters and uh, different kind of players and personalities. And, uh, you know, donor fits in with everybody. And, uh, and uh, I, think, I think it really, really helped him later as a captain knowing what works and what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So... <laughs> So I think I think it was a good good uh, good way to practice to be a captain, just being uh, around veterans like that. Shane, what did you learn from Keith Kachuk in terms of leadership, Teppo Newman? And yeah, I had Kinger, I had Keith and and Teppo as captains, and I truly believe like I couldn't have had a better example of how important it is to be yourself, and that was probably the thing I took away the most was. Kinger was completely different than Keith, and Keith was completely different than Teppo. And Teppo was kind of what we all wanted to be like. And in all seriousness, Teppo was a guy that I remember when they traded him. I was downstairs in my house in in, in Arizona, and I, I truly was devastated when they let when Repo got traded. And and me and him, I don't think I've ever had a serious conversation because Repo is always sarcastic. But he is one of those guys that you can't find people in the league that are like him he's just he was a special guy and and for me to be able to be I, I got to be an assistant captain with him and and to just watch and see the way he interacted with people if you could be a, if you could be a leader you wanted to be like repo and all three of them were so unique in their own way and I learned so much from each one of them Kinger was the guy that connected with everybody Keith was bigger than life personality and repo was just the example that everyone wanted to be Ray and Antoine, you guys came to this team with a boatload of games under your belt. So how did he lead you, Ray? Or did he? Could he? Well, no, it's hard to lead from the training room. <laughs> talking about horses with Stan Wilson. <laughs> uh, That's my point. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I mean, here, here's a couple things. Um, first of all, work ethic was never a question, right? Yeah. So any, anything you're doing in practice, you're doing it full force because he is... Um, if you're getting skated, he's going as hard as he can. If you're just doing five on fives, he's, he's going as hard as he can. So you, you can never have an easy way out. Um, the biggest thing I think with him is, it, it, like he said, he, he was himself. He wasn't going to come in and be, become a, a yeller and a screamer. And he, uh, he left that to the hot-headed little guys like, like <laughs> myself. And he would come in and after I finished, he would come in and actually take a little um, softer approach with everybody. Um, the biggest thing probably, though, is to... to the way he looked at every other player in the room, just on an everyday basis, a, a practice day, where he could tell if something was off on somebody, and he had the wherewithal to actually pay attention to people on a daily basis, not just a game day basis, not just you know when it's convenient for him. Um, I think that's what a captain is, is not something who's just trying to lead by example on the ice, but who's actually taking an interest in the players and their personal lives as well. Uh, there's a lot that goes on outside the game that a lot of us don't know about. I think Shane was always very good at uh, having a pulse on what was going on with people in their individual lives. What about you, Antoine? Yeah, well, uh, Wits summed it up really well. And uh, obviously the way 
uh, leading by example. Uh, it's not only on the ice, but I think one thing that was uh, eminent and, and was jumping out was how he was treating people around and how he, he had that touch, like which was talking, uh, having him and that care with everybody. It didn't matter what was your role on the team, uh, even you know, with the trainers, the staff, and how he conduct himself. And Shane is commanding respect just by the way he respect other people. And it goes a long way and it allows him to have that, uh, that sense of, of caring for everybody. And he, he knows what's going on. And, allows him and put him in a really good spot where uh, with that respect he can doing his job effectively and you know as a leader you need to to respect but respect you can't ask for respect you just be yourself and Shane was doing that anybody better than anybody watch how I did this Tyson <laughs> has he been leading you for most of your adult life in a sense do you think <laughs> Or is it the other way around? I don't yeah, know anymore. I've been babysitting this guy. Okay. My, you wonder why I retired 10 years early. My back has been killing me from carrying this guy around since we were, what was okay. it, 10 years old? I think oh, right, yeah. when I yeah. first met him. But uh, no, I, I mean, everyone, of course, knows the guy he is. And, and that's a lot of what you hear about Shane and uh, what he's like off the ice. And, and Ray, you, you, you nailed it with, with that one. For me, though, on the ice, uh, 1,540 games that he played. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I've never seen a guy play harder. Um, that many games is just incredible. To, to go out there and play that hard every night, uh, the way he had to play, um, that's what fired me up. I mean, this guy would go out there, he'd run somebody over in the corner, drag two guys with him to the net and, and score. And, uh, you know, he could lift a bench, he'd get into a scrap, he'd score a goal, whatever it was. This guy led by example, and I'll tell you what, following him out onto the ice was, uh, was something else. Every, every single night to follow a, a guy that size as your captain, it was, it was pretty comforting, I can tell you that. Are you getting any goosebumps or anything? Is, are you realizing what 72 hours is going to be like? <laughs> yeah. It's, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right, just leave that alone. I want to get to some moments um, that we all witnessed on the ice collectively here and uh do we have the dome face does the dome face can we just leave it i don't have a direct shot we have sort of a profile of it uh, i heard your explanation of it i absolutely love it on our uh, 19 moments that we had so uh, real quick right down the line ray when you see the dome face where does that take you i'm afraid to ask <laughs> <laughs> that one i think i know where it's from so i know yeah. that's his hat trick one isn't it uh, is that his hat trick face oh, no. or is that the, i made a pass yeah <laughs> that was warm up. He scored in warm up. <laughs> oh man! Well, look at his eyes. That's the other thing we haven't talked about. Lots of people. When, when Donor is excited and he gets fired up, look, his eyes get. Buzzed. Look at the size. Look at them. They're lunatic. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. And who was it that you got into it with? Somebody ran over uh, OEL. Oh, Cassian. Not too long ago. I think I was retired at this time. Uh, but the look on your face after when you were going after him was like a, a lunatic, just like that. So um, he has it in him, people. Don't, don't let him fool you. Don't let him fool you. He comes across as nice, but don't be on the wrong side. Was that the Detroit game? Yeah. What, yeah. Where did, when, he, when you see that face, Antoine, what about you? Well, it's, it's go time. And, and just to see that uh, passion, a lot of it was, you know, obviously in, in playoff, that, that was imminent. That was... Huge, but you'd see that on any any day, like, and and you know you're you're in for business when you see that. Hopefully, you're not facing that guy. Uh, you know, you want to be on that right side. Did Sean Burks see that face a few times? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Fighting in practice. Who'd have thought? I'm gonna let that go. Teppo, did you ever see that face back in the day? Uh, many times. It was like. Really. As a defenseman, you shoot from the blue line. You think you scored, <laughs> and he wants to show up that it hit him. Yes. yes. Oh man, he took my goal away. <laughs> <laughs> he hit his lace or his pants or something. He wants to really show up that it hit me, so he can still steal my my goal. Tyson, that face reminds me of that playoff series with Detroit, and I know you have a very strong opinion, and I'm going to stand right behind you with it. You should have been on the ice for Game Seven. He should have been. I think that was one of the biggest mistakes Dave Tippett ever met, ever made. Um, just having him on the bench. I mean, he was picking defensemen off one by one by one. They were honestly, they needed a uh, 
a full set of uh, laundry change on uh, the Detroit side. I mean, it, it was – I've never seen anything like it. I, this guy, when it came to playoff time, whether it was Kamloops in, in junior uh, or the NHL, I just wish I, we would have seen it more. I mean, this guy was a playoff performer. He, he rose. Um, and, again, it, I feel bad because he's not competing anymore. That same face, I can promise you, goes at the at the card table with Grandma. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, he's the ult ultimate competitor. Um, <laughs> just between us, what would you have had in the tank for Game Seven? I could have played. I know I could have. I still think I can. And, and Tip and I've had this discussion. He he had he had some history though with Billy Garen, where Billy had played in a game where he convinced Tip to let him play. And it ended up hurting Billy for a little while. And Tip didn't want that to happen. And that was his reason. I still disagree with his decision, but I understand that he, where he was coming from. Can I go to the uh, Chicago game six? I uh, want to change the tone here. You won a playoff series. Yes. We have some Im images of that entire series. It's one of my best shifts there when I'm on uh -huh. my knees, okay, usually. Thanks. Uh, Ray, that, I, that will live with a lot of Coyote fans forever. It was the first playoff series victory all kinds of drama in overtime. Can you project to us what it was like to be on the ice with Shane for that series? Well, I know what it meant to him. Um, yeah. you know, just being with this organization, I know after uh, you know, Teppo and some of those guys, it was lean years for a little while there, and then the buzz around the Coyotes when, when Tippett was coaching and Don was running the upstairs, you could feel it in the league that they had something special going here, especially with the run that they had the year before with Detroit. Um, and then the, to win that against a team that uh, was pretty pretty darn good, yeah. and uh, that that picture of Smitty there at the end pretty much summed it up because yeah. he uh, we got outshot two to one every game, and if it wasn't for Mike Smith in that series, we weren't moving on. Do you remember what he might have been like in the room right after Antoine? It was a very proud moment, uh, and like uh, like Ray was saying, it was uh, like the chemistry that was building, and you can sense we had something special. Uh, that was a really good team, and you know Shane was as a leader. We knew what he meant for the organization, and it was it was something that uh, you could tell that it was uh, a big step for uh, for us as a group, and we uh, we were proud, and we, we we had something going here. I know you were public enemy number one, Tyson, in Chicago, that series, and still are in some circles. It was a clean hit, wasn't it? Was it was a clean hit. Uh, <laughs> You, were, you had to be emotional watching your friend go through that handshake line. No, I certainly was. I mean, he's the captain of, of this team, and I think in a lot of ways, a lot of those guys in that locker room were, were playing for, for Shane to, to get to that next round. And, um, you know, they'd watched him for so many years go through, you know, so much, so much here with this organization, the franchise. Uh, so to move on like that was, was obviously extra special for them, knowing they were doing it for him. Temple, you were a part of those early playoff games, the whiteouts at America West Arena, the St. Louis Blues series, still, I still think is the worst loss to endure in Coyote history, but you had to be dialed in on what was happening for these guys, weren't you? Oh, yeah, I like uh, uh, just uh, uh, how much has, or how, much, how, how many times we were so close. It, it was, we were so close so many times, and then just to, you know, for Shane to uh, succeed and move on, it, it, you know, it was it, it was huge for everybody who played with him before, and uh, and especially for the team team at the time. Can you please now tell everybody how injured you were? It was at the end of the Chicago series, right? Yeah, yeah. Didn't you like get split in half? <laughs> yeah, the, I got hit. Well, I got hit early in the series by Jarmelson. He hit me with an un. He caught me. Lanks gave me a suicide pass. Who he never, knocked you out. Yeah, knocked I was. Out. I was a little. I know. I had my bell rung. <laughs> that used to be what concussions were. <laughs> so wrong. I had my bell rung, and uh, <laughs> I was trying to kill him for the rest of that series. And I got hit by Bickle along the wall, and when it did, I bruised a part of your body that I didn't think could be bruised. I didn't even know that that was that I had it, and. I couldn't, like the next, th the next morning, I, I couldn't walk. Like I couldn't walk, I couldn't get off the plane and I had to go and get this injection where I'm not even going to describe where that injection was. It was a stomach muscle, folks. <laughs> he, he didn't know he had any. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh my but, goodness. But they hid you, remember that? The, yeah. I mean, it's one of the 
most interesting moments that, that I can think yeah. of. Yeah. They, they hid you, the coyotes. There was a weird press conference at the airport. Yeah. People I were holding you up, right? Yeah, I couldn't. It hurt so much. I've never been like, I felt like I was at least eight. Well, I felt that so, I couldn't move. Like, it, and what I, it bruised the very center of your body, like where your hip bones are connected to each other. It, it bruised and, and did something to them. And, it hurt so much, but it was great to win. I remember thinking, I didn't know if I was going to be able to play in the next series, but it was one of those things that I got some injections and it worked good. Which leads us later after a win over Nashville to the Los Angeles Kings. And I will say this, um, I still think if you guys didn't have four weeks off before you played them, that you would have beat the LA Kings. I'm not going to show a specific moment in the handshake line. I think that lives and speaks for itself. But Shane, I'll let you discuss the emotions of that particular time it came to an end you were on the doorstep of the stanley cup finals it didn't happen and i know you wanted to say hello to dustin brown we've talked about that a lot but can you just take us back to just that moment well yeah that was frustrating it seems that it was so fun to be in that series and so fun and and these guys have experienced that they've went you know ray and vermi have won the whole thing and i mean we all dreamed of doing that Repo and Nasher and I, we dreamed of doing it. And so Repo had it when he went with Buffalo when he got to the final, to the conference finals. And it, it's one of those things that when you, when you recognize how hard it is, and especially if it's, I think, towards the end of your career, it just it, it hurts that much more because you realize that it doesn't happen quickly. It doesn't happen very often. And uh, to get there is pretty special. And the chances of getting back at that moment, I remember, I remember as I was leaving the ice thinking like, that was probably my one chance that I'm going to really get. I mean, obviously, you, you, there's always hope and you always believe that there's another chance coming. But in that moment, you're you're probably a little bit too realistic with yourself that that was a little bit. It was probably going to be the the closest I'd ever get. And and it was it was to a team that was in eighth place that, uh, that you thought you had a legitimate chance to beat. Obviously, you, you see going forward how great they were and how amazing they played and. And what they did to New Jersey, and uh, so you, you you understood. But I was uh, I was pretty emotional after that game. That game I might have argued a little bit with the ref after that game. But um, yes, you did. Yeah, that was right, rightfully so though. That yeah, one, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, and that was one that it was that was that was as hard as it as as, as a loss. But at the same time, the best experience ever. Like it was so much fun. Like. There's nothing like being kind of humbled, but at the same time getting to experience all the joys and all the pains and the emotion. It's the thing you miss most, I think, as a player when you're done. Antoine, you mentioned this. I, I want to go right to Antoine's time with the Cup. You left to go win a Cup. What would you tell him about that if, if you could go back in time? Oh, she, that's a tough one. I know. If there's one guy that deserves this trophy, on, that's this guy, you know. And I think uh, everybody here shares that, and that's what makes it so special because uh, unbelievable players, outstanding human being, person, uh, they have great, uh, well, it's not even uh, strong of a word, career and journey, and yet, you know, not accomplishing it. It's not a lack of, you know, deserve it because... Uh, I was I was cheering uh, w once after that so bad that you know on a personal note it might be a little selfish but I don't think it's a selfish thing because I'm pretty sure everybody's watching here they probably with me with that that everybody kind of quietly you know, cheer for this guy and and it goes with the same thing you see some guys you know we all fans we all players you watch what's going on it's always a pretty neat celebration and when guys like like Shane get a chance you know you want them to have a success and definitely I think everybody want him to be a, a Stanley Cup champion why didn't you leave it wasn't for me trying to push him trust me did you want him to trust try? me uh, I don't did probably four years in a row at the deadline or near yeah. I would because I know what it's like to help to hold it I know what kind of career he has has had and I know what it can do for you um, internally as a person. And 
people of the Arizona uh, Coyotes uh, organization can really feel proud that he did not step outside of that. And it wasn't, I pushed every year at the deadline. I phoned him every year. Teppo, you left and it was okay. Did you tell him? <laughs> that it's okay to yeah. leave? Yeah. No, I didn't. No? No. Kind of, I think this was his home and yeah. this is where he belonged. You guys had conversations a lot. I know that. I mean, we all wanted that for him, right? And you're closer to him than anybody, Tyson. Well, I, you know, you also recognize that, you know, he's, he's loyal sometimes to a fault. He's like a, he's like a big dog, you know, that, <laughs> that no matter how much you're like, go, 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 he's, he's not going to leave. And I think that's what it was here. If he was ever going to win, he always told me it was going to be, it was going to happen here with the team that drafted him. So why didn't you? <laughs> I, I I did believe when when I was given the opportunity to play in the league that my job was to win here, and so there's a huge element to that. And then um, when I wasn't having as much success as I should have early on in my career, there was people that stuck by me and um, and kept me here and, and didn't just get rid of me. And so then when the opportunity came for me to go, it uh, it felt like by that time the team was kind of. I was responsible for the team, and there was my team, and I wanted to, as much as it would be amazing to win anywhere and to, to do that, that my job was to win here. And then you look at a big part, obviously, was the family of the, the group of people that, starting with the, the, the support staff on top of the players and on top of my friends and on top of the people here in the Valley, I wanted, this was my home, and I wanted to win here. That was what I kept saying. And, and, and I'm not trying to say anything because I don't want to be, but I, I, I truly view Teppo as one of, with so much respect. And I'm not, I wasn't giving myself a way out because I never ever, I, I always wanted to win. And <laughs> it's been pointed out that I can be overly competitive more than I should have been at times. But I wanted to win here. And Repo's, the guy that I wanted to be like as much as I could. And when his career ended and he had never won a Stanley Cup, he's more of a winner than anyone else, that I, than so many people that I played with and had been around and had met over my career that had won. And so I, it, in the worst, in the best way and in the, maybe the worst way, it took, I, I came to grips with that when, when, when it happened with Repo. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to, uh, no, it wasn't like I chose, it was just, and hey, I came pretty close a couple times, so I'm, um, but at the same time, it, this was home, and this is where I was going to be. No regrets? Not yep. one, okay. not one single regret ever. I was actually, I was hoping that would happen, and I knew it was. These are season ticket holders, you know that, by the way? This is a special invitation event, and I said before you got out here, we all know they've made an investment, but they make an emotional investment. And I know you, all of you guys get that, right? Clearly? 100%, okay. yeah. Like, unbelievable. I'm the, I'm the, truly, I'm as, like, the coolest thing of my career, the thing that gets me most excited is I am genuine in my fandom of these guys. Like, they're the best hockey players in the world in my generation. Like, they're the best that there has ever played the game. Like, when you talk about how good the NHL is, it is amazing. And they're my friends. And that, to me, is the coolest. Like, I would have given anything to be friends with an NHL player. And these guys are my friends. I got to be friends with Tyson from when we were little. But I got to see what he did as a player when he absolutely would not quit. He wouldn't quit. We, him and I joked all the time. When you come to a training camp, you show up and you get seen. And he would do anything to get seen. And it was funny because he is as tough a person as I've ever met. And you would talk to him going out onto the ice. And the reason I think he's so tough is because he's, he was afraid at times of how tough other guys were. And it wouldn't slow him down for a second. He would run through an absolute brick wall if he thought that was going to get his team a chance to win. And it was contagious and infectious, and you love to be around him. Teppel was the greatest. He's one of the greatest humans I've ever met. He's somebody that changed the way that I viewed the way you're supposed to be as a professional athlete. He is somebody that 
I got to be friends with. He is a guy that I am so excited that he's my friend. Vermi is arguably the best person in the world. And I, I don't know how else to put it. He truly is. I could tell you story after story of the guy's strength and his character and who he is. And on top of that, he was just an unbelievable centerman. And Ray has become one of my best friends in, in the league. And somebody that I admired everything about him in the way that he handled himself off the ice, the way he's handled himself on the ice. You cannot talk to one person about Ray and there isn't a smile instantly on their face. On top of the fact that if he played in the game today, he would probably have led the league in scoring because he was just absolutely incredible. And these are my friends. Like these, that's the coolest part. In my career, I got to be friends with all of these guys. I literally have their phone numbers and can call them and go hang out with them. It's the coolest thing in the whole world. And I got to play in the NHL. That's the part that absolutely blows me away. That's Shane Doan. Right there, right? Okay. And by the way, Tyson still wants to be seen. Right? Yeah. You wear the suits, the hair, and the ties. Are you kidding me? It's and it's what's perfect. Made, it right? is. It is absolutely. And I gave him the worst advice ever when he were discussing. Like he was, he had another contract. He was going to get another contract with Tampa Bay, and he was like, "No, uh, well, you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to?" Do? I was like, "Play as long as you can, Tyson. Play as long as you can." And he was like, "No, I'm not going to. I'm going to do this." And it's been an unbelievable career decision by him, and he is the face of the Coyotes now, which is. So thankful he never listened to me because it is so fun to listen and watch him. And I, anyways, it's, I've been so lucky that these are my friends. These are my friends, and it's so, the coolest thing ever. All right, before we land the plane and let you guys go off to your night and we all go to your party, thank you, by the way. Yeah. Um, this may not be easy for you, but I, I actually, based on our conversation that we aired a little bit of uh, last night on our telecast in Vancouver, I think you're at peace. I believe you. So I want to roll back the, the last moments that we saw you on the ice Shane, can you narrate this? I know it's not easy, but what do you remember? <laughs> I got <gotcha. laughs> you. That was cool. I mean, that was cool. That was tough leaving the ice there, but uh, that was cool. It was, uh, it was a great ending. So, Tyson, I'm going to let you bail him out. I, that was one of the hardest things I ever saw. How about you? Yeah, it, it didn't seem real, to be honest. I mean, I do anything to see him walk down that tunnel one more time and, you know, do a lap. I think uh, we can all uh, agree with that. It's, you know, we're, we're still, still a hole. You know, it doesn't seem right. So with that, I'm going to go right down the line. It's not the ring of honor. Number 19 is going up in the rafters. One by one, how appropriate is that? I'll start with you, Tyson. Well, I, I think, you know, obviously he gave so much to us. Um, you know, it, as fans and broadcasters and trainers and coaches, it's just so nice that, you know, we get to celebrate him, and I know he's going to hate every moment of it. All the attention. Never seen a guy not be able to take a compliment more than this guy, but um, I've never met a more deserving person, um, what he's done for hockey here. And, um, you know, he's uh, he's – the best human being I know. So it's, it's nice that we all get to celebrate him. Depo? Well, it's a great honor to be, be here uh, celebrating his career and uh, uh, just amazing, amazing person. Uh, 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 I don't know, but just thrilled to be here and honored to be here and uh, and uh, so happy for him Antoine again if there's one not yet one player but one person that deserves this uh, attention and I know he's as you can imagine he's so humble and he finds a way to uh, turn a question and make us feel like uh, he's the lucky one having him uh, around but it's truly the other way around um, it's a privilege uh, to have a chance to play with Shane, but it's a privilege having his number in my phone. <laughs> and I have a chance to call him. Um, the, the values that he carries and the way he acts and the way he carries himself, you don't see that. You don't see that. And he's, he deserves any uh, attention that he's going to get. And uh, I just feel privileged to be a witness and be alongside, and I can call him my friend. Ray, I'll let you bring it home. 
Yeah, um, I've had the, the pleasure of living right across the street and our kids becoming best friends. And um, the best thing, with, like you said, this is not the ring of honor. There's a lot of great names up there. Uh, Tepo, you're up there at JR. Um, think about it from an organizational standpoint. The standard which now it takes to get your number uh, retired is not easy. If that's the new standard for the Arizona Coyotes, I don't feel you're going to have a lot of players up there because I just don't think there's a lot of players um, on and off the ice that are as committed to their family, their community, and their team as much as Shane don't. Like I said, this is uh, one of those weekends, and uh, I didn't mean to do that to you. I was just trying to warm Thanks you up a lot. for I Sunday. I appreciated that. Just a trying lot. to warm Thank you up you. for Sunday. Uh, before we go, uh, show of hands, including you guys, how many people think that he's going to get through his speech? Yes or no? <laughs> no, I didn't think so either. Um, <laughs> uh, you're going to hear me say this on Sunday, and I want to say it here. You have been a captain to not just gentlemen like this that laced up skates and put on sweaters and played the greatest game on earth. You have been a captain to hundreds and hundreds of people that you probably have never even met. And uh, you've been a captain to me in my life too, so I just wanted to say thank you for coming out here, Shane. You're, uh, you're one in a million. Enjoy every single second of this weekend. Savor it, okay? And thanks for the party. We're on our way, gang, right? <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, how about a big hand for Tyson Nash, Teppo Newman, Antoine Vermette, Ray Whitney, do you have a final thought, Captain? No, just thank you guys so much. It's been, it's one of those things. Coyotes Icebreakers is brought to you by Auto Nation. Auto Nation sold over 12 million vehicles. Join the crowd at AutoNation.com.